Hello, I'm Nick Groombridge, uh, and I'm recording this story with Jonathan Morgan uh, for Brecon Stories. We're here at the Hours, up near the Cathedral, uh, cafe and bookshop. Jonathan, can I ask you a little bit about yourself? We all know you from around the town as, as, local, as a local legend, but you're also a, a local historian and written a number of books. That's right, I've written six books. Um, I was educated at Christ College, I got a scholarship to Sandhurst in the Royal Regiment of Wales for 10 years and came out with post-traumatic stress and I felt a bit beleaguered in the Royal Regiment of Wales as a Welsh officer. So when I came back and went to university in Aberystwyth, I um, s searched into uh, knowledge of Wales and realised that the Welsh had achieved a huge amount whereas in the army they were very prominent. Indeed, and in some of your books you cover this, but we're going to sort of try and focus in on the town of Brecon and some of the people of Brecon. Right up. And I thought that perhaps because we're up here at the cathedral, we might start with the Welsh archers. Yeah. Well, everybody th thinks that the South Wales borderers are the only regiment uh, associated with the cathedral. But long before that, um, I think it was over a hundred archers went from Brecon to Agincourt, and before that, there were plenty of archers employed by the king. I think the king was the sort of lord of the manor here. So um, uh, they went off to Agincourt. They were commanded partly by Sir Roger Vaughan and partly by Davy Gam. Um, uh, the games came from Brecon and the Vaughans were associated with Chittar Court, where the uh, rally for the archers was held before they went off to Agincourt. Um, uh, Roger Vaughan was supposed to have helped save Henry V's life, but there's no real evidence on that. Um, and David Gabb was killed at Agincourt. <coughs> they said he was knighted, but there's no evidence, according to the Garter mm. King of Arms, that he was knighted. All right. But in the cathedral, there is a, a, a magnificent uh, what is that? It's a display, uh, record oh, yeah. of all the archers yeah. with all those fantastic old Welsh names. That's right. From which we get some of the sort of modern names that That's we think right. of. So Ap Howell and Ap Priest and That's things right. like that, That's yes? Right. Yes. In fact, I think I was instrumental in putting it up there. Uh -huh. um, I certainly gave a copy to the town hall. And um, yes, it is pretty authentic, that list, mm. and uh, it's there for anyone to see. I, I've been worried someone might pinch it, but um, <laughs> there we are, it hasn't well, been pinched yet. Well, let's hope they don't, when they see all around the world, they see this and they'll go there. But you, you mentioned uh, the name Vaughan there. Oh uh, yes, the Vaughans are an old family. Uh, it is an old family, and there are quite a few old families around here, but yeah. one of their descendants became perhaps a little bit more famous. Oh, Henry, Henry Vaughan, yes, the poet, mm. remarkable man, a religious poet, fought in the Civil War, um, and uh, every year there's a Vaughan conference in, in Breckenshire. It had to, used to be at the Castle Hotel. But um, uh, Henry Vaughan is one of the great uh, mystical poets with George Herbert and Thomas Trahan of that time. So, yes, Henry Vaughan is one of Breckenshire's great poets, really. Mm. The Swan of the Usk. Swan of Usk, he was yes, called. Yes, yeah. uh, the Silurian. That's it. Indeed. So what, where, where do those names derive well, from? Well, the Silurians were one of the tribes here. Uh -huh. And the Swan of Usk is because he lived on the Usk. And he wrote poetry about the Usk. You know. mm -hmm. um, I frequently feel moved to write poetry about the Usk, but I've, unfortunately I've never got round to it. But he, uh, he managed to do this whilst also doctoring around the area, yes? Yes, he was a, 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 a doctor. Um, and uh, he courted his wife up here at the cathedral. Um, so he was a well-known local person. You know. mm. And, and his name sort of lives on in some of the buildings around the town and there's a, yeah. as a, a walk around Tallybont uh, name for him as well, isn't that? That's it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't come up yet, but I always think of... I, I may be completely wrong here because I'm, I'm not a historian. Brecon perhaps owes its position to the Normans. Uh, I think if it's quite a sort of Norman town. People say, oh yeah, what did the uh, Romans ever did for us? I think that perhaps what did the, Bre the Normans do for us? And I think it... It's sort of made, so a name that's coming to mind is the De Wintons. 
Uh, that's yes, a Norman uh, name, yes? Yes, the yeah. De Winters, it's a very um, uh, unlikely name for the De Winters because they were Wilkins up to the 18th century, ah. or certainly the 19th century. And I'm told by them that they discovered uh, an old uh, family connection with the De Winters. And of course, even today, the Norman name is more fashionable than the Welsh name. Indeed. So <laughs> another, the Herberts, another typical Welsh family, that were Ap Thomas and suddenly became Hare Bear. Uh, you know. uh, right. So it's a fashionable thing to do to change your name to a Norman name. You know. Yes. Well, you stick with your Welsh name and I'll stick with my English name. Right. But I notice that round here there are streets called De Winton, there are yeah. graves with the De Winton. And, yeah. um, and you say they'd been previously been called something else, but there would have been some original De Wintons who would have been associated well, with the establishment of the, of there's the town. No, there's no real evidence mm -hmm. oh, of that right. at all. No. Oh. They were Wilkins. And, and had a bank in Brecon, a major bank in Brecon. And then much later on, in the 19th century, I think it was, they changed their name to De Winton. Oh, right. Because so, they had a very tenuous... Is there a uh, proper Norman name I should be looking out for then uh, in, in town? No. No, no. Oh, right. The De Winton's so, aren't really, as far as I can see, aren't really a Norman oh, right. family. No. Oh, oh, dear, this is controversial. Well, <laughs> So you can't give me a nice... Uh, De Bowen is coming to my head. Is there a, was there a De Bowen? Did they um, become the Bowens? No. Uh, no, all right. No, uh, I can't remember the name of the chap who founded Brecon uh, Castle. De, De Nersh? Oh, De right? New... Uh, Bernard De Newmark. Ah, uh -huh. Yeah, Bernard De Newmark. He was the one who came here. And there was a big battle against the Welsh commanded by a Tudor or something or other. And he won. And uh, therefore the town of Brecon became dominated by the Normans. Mm, and, and even had Norman law for some time. I think so, I think so yes, yeah. yes. Indeed. So, we, we've mostly been talking about uh, men. I've got one more man to mention. I've got a particular favourite. I didn't know the connection until I was in uh, an exhibition that was at our local uh, library, art gallery, museum, a uh, collection from the National Gallery in Wales, and this was the Jones picture, the, the beautiful little picture oh, of Thomas, his, Jones, his, Thomas yes. Jones, his work in Naples, and well, he, Thomas, he has a connection with Brecon yes, too? Yes, Thomas Jones was educated at Christ College and became one of uh, Wales' foremost paint, painters, uh, artists. He certainly considered that now, and there was a large exhibition at the National Museum a few years ago. And yes, his paintings, a lot of them are landscapes. He has an Italian period when he lived out there and painted some exquisite paintings of uh, buildings and that sort of thing in Italy. And yes, he's considered one of Wales' greatest artists, really. Hmm. I think I first came across his work in a, uh, a TV series, which I think was making him even wider than Wales and saying, you know, it's national oh, yes, yes, significance. Definitely. definitely. But perhaps we'll wind up by talking about a woman. Oh, yes. There are many formidable women uh, in present day uh, yeah. uh, Brecon, but, but how about some, some woman from our history? Well, I think Gwenthil Morgan is quite interesting. Uh, she started, she was quite a substantial family she came from, I think. And I think she came from the Sony Bridge area. But um, uh, she certainly... Uh, was on the town council and was made the first woman mayor in Wales. All right. And she was a great um, supporter of all sorts of causes, especially women's causes. And um, uh, her funeral, I think, was huge when she died. And she was fated as one of Brecon's most famous women. Mm. Is, there's a picture of her in the council chamber, yes, yes, yes. Uh, in, in ceremonial robes, That's right. and uh, one of the many plaques around town, I think, records where she some, lived. Some, where she lived. Where, yeah. where was that? Was that on De Morgan Street? Or? Yeah, I think so. I think so. So look out for that. So I, I think we're done here. Uh, right you could, I know you could talk forever, and if people find you around the town, they can buy you a drink, and you will do so. Yes. Right, sir. Right, sir. Thank you, Jonathan. I think that concludes our wonderful interview. Cheers.